Hello and welcome to English Literature with Susan. Now I'm going to talk about Sailing to Byzantium, a famous poem written by William Butler Yeats, the Irish poet. Sailing to Byzantium is written near the end of the life of the poet. And in this poem, he acknowledges his old age and uh, you know the old body in his poetry. So uh, we can say in a way the poem shows a transitory phase in the um, work of the poet in which he shows uh, a new consciousness of flesh and body and the aging body. And there are some consequences for this. For example, in this poem, one of the most important themes related to Byzantium is the theme um, of artifice and its priority uh, over what is natural. So what is natural is losing its prominence while uh, what is uh, what is artificial would remain as, as an aesthetic kind of phenomena. And uh, the, the uh, symbol, you know, you know, uh, WBH um, uses symbols in his poetry and Byzantium is a multiple uh, symbol in this poem. Uh, in general, we can say that by Byzantium, he refers to the prominence of art, especially uh, that uh, this city played uh, an important role um, in, in, in one era around this time in which the Academy of Plato was, uh, uh, was closed and uh, St. Sophia was opened as a center for mysticism and Sophism. So the logic and rationality is kind of replaced by what is mystic. And this is a privilege according to William Butler Yeats and uh, the prominence of artifice, as I told you. And um, there is one another point about Byzantium. Byzantium at this specific time of history was uh, was a city in which art was a close particle of, of life in it. So life and art were closely entangled and there was um, there were no kinds of maybe uh, dichotomies between what was artificial and what was natural. So that unity of being or that holistic view or uh, that organic unity is uh, considered to be uh, symbolic and significant by William Butler Yeats in this poem. So in, uh, at the beginning of the poem, he says that he wants to sail from this life of flesh, from this life of body and nature, and to the life of a Byzantium, which is the life of the art and stasism and mysticism. So he wants to move from, uh, from one thing which is mortal to something which is immortal and eternal. And here you can see an image of Saint Sophia. Um, uh, Byzantium, uh, just to know the historical uh, background, uh, is also called Constantinople, which was uh, the capital um, of the eastern part of the Roman Empire. And it is uh, what is today called Istanbul, that city which, uh, which actually stays on the border of Asia and Europe. So this liminality of the city, this borderline kind of condition of the city can also add up to that multiplicity of the significance of the symbol of Byzantium in W. B. Yeats's poem. And just um, as, a, as a point, you can listen to Paul Kelly's adaptation of Sailing to Byzantium by W. B. Yeats. Uh, he, had, um, he had actually adapted this poem uh, into some music and then uh, into a kind of lyric and listening to it as very pleasant to the ears, at least to me. Uh, let's go to the text of the poem. The poem doesn't have a complicated text. As soon as you know the symbols and the significance and the function of the symbols in this poem and the relationship between the two themes, natural and artifice, in this poem, you can decode it easily. That is no country for old men. It seems familiar, yes? It is actually that, that famous movie has taken its title from this uh, very uh, first sentence uh, of Sailing to Byzantium uh, by William Butler Yeats. And it shows that 
he can no more play um, a practical role in this country because he's now old. So he, he should move at least spiritually from here to somewhere else. Why, why here is not a country for old men? Because everybody is busy in regeneration, is making in making love and copulating, whether human beings or other um, aspects of nature like animals. Um, uh, so so uh, life is going on and that the natural course of incidents makes death inevitable. So from a place in which death uh, as the penultimate part of life, he wants to move into a kind of life in which death um, death does not exist. Death is dead because of that, um, let's say, static or spiritual life. The young in one another's arms, birds in the trees, those dying generations, a dear song. The salmon falls, the mackerel crowded seas. Uh, the mackerel is a kind of fish, this one, which is very prolific uh, and regenerative. The salmon falls, the mackerel crowded seas. Uh, generally, fish is also related to sexuality. It's a symbol of sexuality. And uh, um, fish are famous for their reproductive power. So, you know, they say that fish is a nutritious food which would make um, reproduction and regeneration easier. Uh, and then fish, flesh, or fowl, whatever it is, it is related to the flesh, the world of the flesh. And you see uh, an example of alliteration here, fish, flesh, or fowl, and uh, command all summer long. Command, uh, command here means praise. So they are praising all summer long. And summer is significant. Summer is a time of making love. It's a time of romance. It's a, In the seasonal cycle, they say Northrop Fry, for example, says summer is a time um, time of love and romance. So this is the romantic phase of life. But anyway, when, when there is summer, the upcoming autumn, is also considered whatever is begotten, born, and dies. And this is life. Begotten, born, die. But W.B. Yeats wants to experience another type of life. Therefore, he wants to make that quest from this life, this country, which is for no old man, to uh, to Byzantium, uh, in which um, it, um, eternalized or spiritual form of life can be experienced. Caught in the sensual music, sensual refers to that flesh, uh, to, to the body aspect, to sexuality. Caught in that sensual music, all neglect, all this fish, flesh, fowl, human beings in one another's arms. Monuments of unaging intellect. What, what they neglect is the monuments of unaging intellect. And where are those monuments of unaging intellect? They are located in Byzantium. In the next stanza, an aged man, and then here he can he just depicts the condition of being old. An aged man is but a paltry thing, a tattered coat upon a stick. Because when people get old, they shrink, they 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 kind of become mini, uh, mini human beings. It says that an aged man is but a paltry thing. Paltry means shaky. A tattered coat upon a tattered means uh you know, mm, a kind of uh you know, worn away, a tattered coat upon a stick unless so clap its hands and sing. So how we can escape this condition um, when we acknowledge the, the life of the soul, the life of the spirit. And uh, don't forget that WBAs believes in the commingling or the um, kind of floating of the life of a spirit into this physical world and louder sing for every tattered mortal dress nor is there saying school by studying monuments of its own magnificence. So then we can acknowledge the magnificence of the soul and its uh, eternal life. We can experience something, you know, of a higher degree. And therefore, I have sailed the seas and come to the holy city of Byzantium. Holy city because it was you know, because of that Hagia Sophia or Saint Sophia, and also because it was the capital of the Roman Empire. Oh, sages, and now uh, uh, in this 
uh, example of apostrophe, he addresses the sages who are who are actually made by an artist. So not the real sage or saint, but the one which is artificially created. All sages standing in God's holy fire as in the gold mosaic of a bowl in this sin. This is, uh, you know, actually in, uh, these uh, works of mosaic, um, many of them can be found in uh, what is called by by the Turkish people Hagia Sophia or Saint Sophia by the, by the English. So he is addressing these people, these saints and sages, rather than the real sages, because art had perpetuated them. They are eternalized in this work. Oh, sages standing in God's holy fire, and you can see the holy fire as in the gold mosaic of a bull, come from the holy fire, Purana Jaya, and be the singing masters of my soul. Here you see the art of WB Yeats, his command of English language. You know, the, the word Purana is not used as a verb in English language. We have Purana or Purana, which, uh, um, which refers to a weaver's bubble and spool or reel. But Yeats here, because of the, that kind of uh, spiral movement, of a bubbling or a parent associates it with his notion of the gyre. If you've listened uh, to my explanation of, uh, of the second coming, there I have also ex uh, explained it from uh, WBA's book, A Vision. According to WBA's, history is moving like this. You know, there are two funnels. It just consider this red part and the blue part. And, uh, you know, history starts from this, uh, you know, this point in the blue part. And uh, when it's end, uh, like it's a cyclical movement, it starts once again here and it repeats itself until it finds its original point here. And then it is repeating and repeating and repeating. Now he asks these sages to move across this gyre because they belong to the past. And now he asks them to come to the time the poet is living and then to take him away. Consume my heart away sick with desire and fastened to a dying animal it knows not what it is and gather me into the artifice of eternity so the burn this body of mine and just let the spirit remain in a work of art you know the poet is getting old he's dying and he thinks about his future he he thinks about uh you know his image in the future generations so um, he's kind of worried for his posterity and in this way he wants to guarantee um his uh, his future as an artist by becoming part of an artifice and you see the theme nature versus artifice is repeating itself at the end of a stanza of this poem and uh, and they become to this stanza once out of nature i shall never take my bodily form from any natural thing when you take my body away and then my soul remains and now i i have nothing to do with the natural thing which is dying but such a form as grecian goldsmith make of hammered gold and gold enameling um gold enameling as as you know a work of arts like this so instead of a real bird which is singing a metaphor for the poet he wants to turn into a golden bird uh which is a work of art to keep a drowsy emperor awake or set upon a golden bow to sing to lords and ladies of byzantium because the real bird would die it it would pass from this place to another but this spirit is just located in a fixed place and then it sings to the lord and the ladies of byzantium regardless of the historical period in which they are living so this spirit becomes like a prophet and it knows of what is past or passing or to come if you're eternal so you know about every part of history but if you're mortal you, you can just uh, know and understand your own time period so in order to go beyond time or beyond what is bodily life you have to become a work of art just like the poem of a poet as it is for example the case with sailing to byzantium well, this was my explanation of this poem, and I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening.